What's that in the sky? Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's dun da da da. Miss Annie. <laughs> Hello and welcome to art class. I am dun da da da. Miss Annie, super art teacher. Now, some of you might be wondering, what makes me so super? Well, let's take a look at my comic book to find out. The Adventures of dun, 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 Miss Annie, super art teacher. Some papers may fly, some paintbrushes may fall, some crayons may spill over when she zooms through the hall. She may be flying so high you can't reach her. Who's that, you ask? It's dun, 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 Miss Annie, your super art teacher. With her materials of magic loaded up in her cart, she's ready for action so we all can make art. In art, you can create such wonderful things like puppets out of paper or a hat out of strings. You can turn into a cat just by making a mask. You can be anybody if you're up to the task. If you make it, then it's real. It's all up to you. When you use your creativity, you'll be super too. In art, you can change into anything you see. If you could change yourself now, what would you be? Like my comic book said, I use art as my superpower. Why is it a superpower? Because I can take things from my imagination and I can magically make them real by either drawing them or painting them or sculpting them or performing them. In fact, you all have this superpower too. Isn't that incredible? Through art, you can take whatever's in your imagination and magically make it real. Now let's do a little experiment. Let's try to imagine you as a superhero. Now think, if you were a superhero, what would your superhero costume look like? What colors would they be? What sort of symbol would your superhero uniform have? What would be your superpower? Where would you be if you were a superhero? And what sort of things would you do to help people? Maybe your superhero has caring superpower. Or maybe they have lightning speed power. Perhaps your superpower is to bring happiness to everyone. Maybe your superpower is really great ideas. Maybe your superpower is firepower. Wow, now once we have that image in our head, let's try to make our superhero real. Are you ready to do it with me? Yay! Come on, let's go! Okay, we're gonna start our superhero self-portraits. Uh, before you get started, you wanna make sure you have all your materials. The first thing that you need is a blank piece of paper. It can just be a plain computer paper, that's fine. You are also going to need a pencil to draw with. If you are allowed, you are also going to need a black marker. It can be a regular marker or a Sharpie. And you're also going to need some crayons. Now, the more colors you have, the better. But if you have a small box of crayons with only the colors of the rainbow, that's still okay. I'm gonna show you how to use those colors uh, to mix to make different colors, okay? So once you have your material set out, the first thing that you want to make sure is that your blank piece of paper is laying down in what we would call portrait orientation. Portrait orientation means that it's laying down to look 
nice and tall. Not wide and fat, that's landscape orientation, but we want it in portrait orientation, which is nice and tall, okay? So once you've laid it down into portrait orientation, Take a look over here. This piece of paper right here, it has the basic shapes that we are going to be drawing together to create the outline of your superhero body. So I have it here just for you to look at for your reference, okay? So let's get started. Number one step is you're going to take your pincher and you're gonna pinch the top of the page and you're gonna hold down the bottom of the page with your other hand. And we're going to bring the edge of the top of the piece of paper down to the edge of the bottom piece of paper. We're gonna line up those edges, hold it down with one hand and crease to fold it in half. Then once we have it folded in half from top to bottom, we're gonna unfold it. The reason why I wanted to fold it is to get this folded line that shows the halfway mark between the top half and the bottom half of our piece of paper. Because we are going to be creating shapes that are either on the top half or the bottom half of our page. So it, it's kind of a little visual guide to let us know what's the top and bottom. Okay, first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to use your pencil to draw out the shapes. You're going to use the pencil instead of the marker because if you make a little boo-boo, you can use the pencil's eraser to erase whatever you don't want and redraw it with your pencil. Okay, so make sure you're drawing with a pencil. The first step that you're going to do is we are going to be drawing first the rectangle of our body. Okay, and if we notice, the bottom of our rectangle is right on that middle fold, okay? So what we're gonna do is, right at the middle fold, I want you to take your four fingers, one, two, three, four, and position them on the fold right in the middle of the paper. Then you're gonna take your pencil and you're gonna draw a horizontal line, that's a line that goes across on the fold from your pinky finger to your pointer finger. So let's draw that out, ready? Mm, and stop. Okay, do we see that? So here I have my first horizontal line of my rectangle. Then I, we're going to use those same four fingers. We're gonna line up our pinky finger at the top of the page. One, two, three, four at the bottom of your pointer finger, right above that horizontal line, you're gonna make a, another little horizontal line mark, can just be a little mark, of where we want the top of our rectangle to be. Do we see that? So what I'm gonna do is from this horizontal line, I'm just gonna draw a straight vertical line up and stop where that mark is. Then I'm going to draw my second vertical line up and stop where that mark is, okay? If you went a little bit beyond, that's okay. You can erase it a little bit to make it shorter, up to you. Then finally, I'm gonna complete my rectangle by drawing that horizontal line where I made that mark. So now I have my rectangle for the body. Next thing we're going to do is we're gonna draw the neck and the head. So notice the neck is much narrower than the shoulders. So that means what we're going to do, a sneaky trick, is right in the middle of the top of your rectangle, you can put your pointer finger down, okay? And you're gonna make a little vertical line, a little mark on one side of your finger, and you're going to make another little mark on the other side of your finger. There we have a great neck size. And then on top of those two little vertical lines, we're gonna draw the shape of our head. Now, which geometric shape is the shape of our head? Ding, 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 ding. It is an oval. It's not a perfect circle. Our heads are not perfectly circular around. They're more of an oval. And an oval is kind of like a circle, but it's a little bit squished. So what we're gonna do is, right where our neck is, we're gonna start drawing our oval. And you can draw it really lightly. I'm using sketch lines very lightly 
so that I can control where my pencil is going. Okay, so once I have my head oval, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to draw my hands. Now, which geometric shape is our hand right here? You're right, it's a circle because our superhero stance has our hands kind of clenched in a fist, which looks like a circle. And if we notice, they're on our hips. So right on that fold, on either side of that rectangle, you're gonna draw your first hand circle on this side, and then you're gonna draw your second hand circle on this side. Now our arms of our superhero body have our elbows bent, which might seem kinda tricky, but I'm gonna show you the sneaky trick of how to show bent elbows for our arms. What we're going to do is about halfway between your shoulder and your hand. This is about halfway. You wanna move over, whoop, just a little bit, about like two fingers over, and make a little dot. Do we see that? Now from the point of your shoulder rectangle, I'm gonna draw a diagonal line out to that point. And then from that point, I'm going to draw a diagonal line meeting up with my hand circle here. So I'm going to draw a diagonal line meeting with my hand. There we go. But our arms are not just teeny tiny little sticks. No way, Jose. They have form. So that means we're going to have to draw another diagonal line out and another diagonal line back in meeting our hand that is parallel to this line. Parallel means when a line is going in the same direction at the same time as another one. So let's draw a parallel diagonal line going the same direction as this one, stopping at the point or about where the point is, and then drawing another diagonal line parallel to that one to our hand. Very good. Now we're gonna do the same thing to this arm. So right about here, that's where my elbow is because it looks like it's on, in the same area as the one across. Ready? Diagonal line out, diagonal line in. Parallel diagonal line out, parallel diagonal line in. Whew, we did it. Nice job. Now we're going to do the shapes that are on the bottom half of our paper, which is our two leg rectangles and our two feet that are kind of like, it's a little bit of an organic shape, but they kind of look like ovals. So let's start off with our legs first. For your legs, it's gonna start on the same vertical line as the side of your rectangle, and it's gonna go down, but it has to stop before the edge of the paper because we need some space for our feet. So right at the bottom of your paper, you might, let's do three fingers from the bottom of your paper, and you can just make a little mark right above those three sort of uh, fingers, ready? Okay, we're gonna bring that line from the side of our rectangle all the way down and stop where we made that mark. Then we're gonna make a horizontal line across and we're going to make our vertical line come down to that point. So we should have a skinny rectangle for one of our legs. Then you're gonna make a little space and again, we're going to do another parallel vertical line, stopping at the same point for our second leg. So ready, I'm starting with a little space in between, going down and stop right where that one is. Okay, and, and on the side of this rectangle, I can draw another vertical line for the side of my leg and stop and then we can complete the rectangle by drawing that horizontal line. For our feet, we are just gonna create ovals that are kind of sticking out. So you can start on the, your oval on uh, this side of your leg rectangle and just have it come out, round back in. And then on the other foot, it's gonna go to the other side, starting at uh, that rectangle, rounding out and back in. Once you have the lines of the shape of your body uh, the, and everything looks a-okay, 
Then what you can do is you can use your black marker to go over your pencil lines that you want to keep. Now, if there were any lines that you want to erase before you outline them in marker, you can erase them. So let's think, maybe I want to get rid of these lines that are in between my arms and my shoulders. Okay. Maybe I want to get rid of these lines that are in between my body and my legs. And maybe I want to get rid of these lines that cut off my legs from my feet. Up to you. If you like those lines, you can keep them, but I'm going to get rid of them. So once I have my lines that I want to keep, I'm going to go ahead and outline all the pencil lines that I do want to keep going over the arms, the hands, the legs, the feet. Now I'm going pretty quickly. You guys can go slower than this to make sure that you are fully outlining the lines uh, without going off the lines, okay? So once I have the outline of my superhero body, I can concentrate on making the face. Now the face is going to be very teeny tiny so it might be very difficult for you to draw your face with the marker so we're going to put the marker on the side and we're going to go back to our pencil okay so around halfway okay around halfway of uh, our oval that's where our eyes are going to be so if it's helpful for you you can draw a, a very faint little line across and for my eyes, all I'm going to do is draw a curved line and a dot underneath, space, curved line, dot underneath. Okay, do we see that? And then for my nose, in between those two eyes and a little bit lower, I'm just going to make a little curved line. And then for my mouth, I'm going to just make a larger, wider curved line for my smile. There we go. Okay, now if you can, if you have a, a marker that is pretty small or fine tipped, you can try to outline the lines of your face or if your marker is too thick, then you can just skip it and leave it in a pencil mark. I'm gonna try it with my marker because I am not gonna press really hard so that it will be pretty thin. There we go. All right, now we're on the fun part of the hair. Now, normally in normal art class, I could work with each one of you to try to draw your very unique hairstyle and hair texture. But since this is a video, I'm just gonna show you a couple of hairstyles and you can take a look and pick which one is like yours. So if somebody has a short haircut that shows their ears right about where your eyes are you want to just make a little curve letter c and then on the other side of your head you want to do a backwards c for your ears then for a short haircut all it is is tiny little dashes dash 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 dash, dash covering a little bit of your forehead dash 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 and then comes back down to your ears that's a kind of shorter haircut if you have a haircut that uh, goes down to maybe your chin or so because you have kind of longer hair um, Again, if you're showing your ears if your ears are showing you can draw your ears But if you have straight hair all it is is you're doing curved lines from the top of your head Stopping at where your chin is so so going down and stopping where your your chin is that's a kind of a little bit longer of a, a shoulder length haircut if you have long straight hair and it's behind your ears, you can draw your ears. And again, you can start it from the top of your head, but this time it's gonna go and uh, go further down to be longer. If you have wavy hair, instead of straight lines, you would make wavy lines at whatever length your hair goes. So if it is long wavy hair, it's gonna go there. Also, this is a number one kid mistake. I noticed that in between your neck and your hair, if there's any space, you wanna also fill in that space as well. Okay, so that's some wavy hair. 
if you have locks or twists in your hair, then what you want to do is just do teeny tiny little spirals of your locks, twists, or braids. And again, they can be as long or as short as they are on your head. So if you have little twists or dreadlocks or braids, if you just do tiny little zigzag lines or spirals, uh, it can show your locks or braids. If you have, let's say, a ponytail, what you, what, or actually, if you have bangs, bangs are kind of difficult, what you can do is you can draw the lines stopping right above your eyes for your bangs and then draw your lines that come down and let's say this person has a low ponytail you might want to make a little mark right above their neck for the elastic band and then have your lines come out from that elastic band if it's a high ponytail what you can do is put a mark of the elastic band towards the top of the head and then have your lines come out and drape down from there okay so now that we have our sort of hairstyles figured out we can now concentrate on trying to come up with some sort of superhero symbol or design now I had shown you some examples of different superhero uh, symbols. They can be very simple shapes, right? Very simple shapes. But one thing that you want to think about is, do you want your superhero to have boots? Do you want your superhero to have gloves? What sort of symbol do you want in the middle? Do you want your superhero to wear a mask or no mask? It's kind of up to you. So I'm just going to show you if you wanted your superhero to wear a mask, one of the things that you can do is right above your eyes, draw a horizontal line. And then right below your eyes, you're gonna make a curved line underneath one eye and then a curved line underneath the other eye. And there's kind of like a little mask. And then in the middle of your body, that rectangular body, you can create any sort of shape that you want that kind of shows your superpower. You can even draw a little image in the middle if you have a certain thing in mind, that's up to you. If your superhero is wearing boots, all you're gonna do is look about halfway between uh, that leg rectangle and you're going to draw just a horizontal line across and a horizontal line across there. If your uh, superhero is wearing gloves, right where that elbow is bent, you can draw a line and a line for gloves, okay? Now for skin tones, we all have different colored skin tones. So if you have in your crayon box people colors of all different sort of tans and browns that is awesome but if you do not have uh, people colors what you can do is you can use the colors to mix different skin tones okay so for example if you have a uh, lovely darker skin tone kind of that is more browner like this one, what you can do is you can find a brown crayon and first start off doing a layer of brown without pressing too hard because you might want to adjust the color. If it looks like your skin tone, then you can keep it. But if you have darker brown skin tone, all you do is you press down harder and that's going to give you the darker brown skin tone. Okay? If you have tanner skin tone where it's not necessarily brown but it's a little bit more orangey tan what you can do is do a layer of that brown really lightly but then on top of that maybe use a little bit of the orange and go on top of that brown with orange and that might give you a sort of tanner skin tone okay if you have a skin tone that is a little bit yellowy, 
what you can do is you can do a layer very, very lightly of orange. Very, very lightly. I'm not even pressing down. And the tiniest layer of yellow on top. Okay. If you have a skin tone that is very light and fair and maybe you sunburn very easily, what you can do is you can use a combination of first of a very light layer of the orange, I'm not pressing down hard at all, and then a very faint layer of pink on top, okay? So there we have different sort of skin tones. And then once you have your skin tone figured out, you are going to use your best coloring to color in your hair color, your superhero uniform, and your superhero accessories. And then you are also going to try to come up with some sort of background for your superhero. For these superheroes, I just made the sky background because they're flying in the sky, but you can use your imagination to draw something new, but you wanna also color it in so that it is, it is fully colored. Now, for those of you who don't know what best coloring means, best coloring means when you're coloring in, you are using small strokes, kind of like small zigzags overlapping each other, back, forth, back, forth, and trying to stay in the lines and cover all the white space. So is this good coloring? No, that's not good coloring because I'm using too wide of strokes, it's getting outside the lines, and there's too many white gaps. So again, best coloring means small strokes overlapping, whoops, overlapping one another and trying to stay in the lines and cover all the white space. Once you've done your best coloring of your skin, of your superhero uniform, and of the background, then your project is complete. Now that you made your own superhero artwork, let's take a look at a couple of artworks that other artists have made about superheroes with really unlikely superhero powers. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at this photograph by the artist named Dulce Pinzon. I'll give you a couple of seconds to look at it and think to yourself, what do you see? Let's take a close look at that Spider-Man. Hmm, what is that Spider-Man doing? How is what he's doing different than how we normally see him? Dulce Pinzon is a U.S.-based Mexican photographer, and she takes photographs of Mexican immigrant workers in New York City dressed up as superheroes as a way to show the extreme helpfulness that they have in the community. Let's take a look at this drawing by the artist Arlene Textaqueen. What do you see? How is it related to superheroes? I'll give you a couple of seconds to think about it. Arlene Textaqueen is an Australian artist. Textaqueen uses paper and markers to create drawings called textas. Textaqueen chooses to dress up as a superhero when teaching or making an art as a way to feel confident around others. Let's hear about their experience in their own words. I became a superhero when I got asked to draw at a childcare center and I went there and I drew in my jeans and a t-shirt and I went, this is ridiculous. Like I need to be somebody. And I've been thinking a lot about how being a superhero suits me because well, if you think about lots of superheroes, they uh, just turn up for that brief moment, do their thing, and then like scuttle away before the crowd gathers. I was just like, yeah, I'm a superhero. They obviously have social anxiety, uh, and so do I. Well, my little superhero artist, it's been so fun hanging out with you, and I'm really excited to see the pictures of your superhero persona. Now, in order to show me, what you need to do is to take a picture 
of your superhero drawing and upload it to the Schoology website under the assignment page that should be listed there. If you need help, make sure that you ask an adult to help you. I cannot wait to see these beautiful artworks. Okay, artists, until next time, I will see you later. This has been another exciting adventure of... Dun, 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 dun.